Are you ready to wield the power of the shield and the power of the sword and become one of the most powerful and tanky players in the game? Well, welcome to our Dragon Dogma 2's Fighter Ultimate Preview Guide. We're going to cover the best strategies for playing as a fighter. We're also going to cover where he's suitable to play as. We're going to cover his playstyle. We're going to cover his abilities and we're going to cover what he's going to pair perfectly with so you could get the best out of the fighter if you already decided to make your choice that the fighter class is the one you want to pick. So if any of you played Dragon Dogma 2s, you are going to be very familiar with the fighter due to the fact that he is coming from Dragon Dogma to Dragon Dogma 2. So it's a very frequently used class in the first game. In addition to that, anybody that's played any RPG, this is the class that you're mostly accustomed to. So what exactly is the playstyle when it comes to being a fighter? When you decide to pick the vocation of a fighter, that means that you're ready to start meleeing. It's basically the melee class. It utilizes the one-handed sword and a shield. Now, the priority main thing that the fighter is always going to prioritize He's going to prioritize defense over dealing massive damage. This is where his shield comes into play due to the fact that his shield is going to allow him to block a lot of damage and deal damage afterwards. Not massive damage, but enough damage to become super powerful. This is why we call this character a tanky player because he's going to be in the front lines to tank anything right with a shield now one awesome thing about the fighter is that not only is he able to block incoming damage for himself he's also able to block incoming damage for his teammates around him remember in this particular game you will be able to play with three additional pawns that are going to be pretty much your you know your your go-to crew that you're going to be rolling with that's why it's extremely important that when you play with the fighter, your number one objective shouldn't be to rush and hit people with a sword. It should be to position yourself during battle to draw enemies attack and then counter that attack after that attack has been blocked. Now, as you progress throughout the game, you will be able to level up the fighter and that's going to strengthen his shield skill, providing heightened protection for not only themselves once again, but also for your teammates. Additionally, considering the skills available within the first game, we could get a better idea of what we can expect. One of the most amazing skills that the fighter had in the first game was the taunting ability. This allows him to taunt enemies to be able to taunt them and have them aggro towards him and then do damage either via a pawns or with himself with him swords. Now, other advanced skills that he's able to tap into Deal primarily with increasing the damage he's able to output and allowing him to be transformed into a high level fighter and a formal force in the battlefield. So now that we understand what we can expect out of the fighter, let's talk about his skills and his abilities. All right, so we're going to take a look at the core skills. We're going to start off with Impale. Now, an Impale is a returning skill from the previous game. If you did play Dragon Dogma 2, you already know what to expect. But for you newcomers, it's pretty much a release stabbing strike. Now, the great thing about the release stabbing strike, you actually start off with this one. So you'll have it right as soon as you come out of the gate. In addition to that, you could actually use this to interrupt a attack if you time this correctly. And if you actually jump in the air and use the attack, you'll be able to knock down the target. So using this particular skill and using it correctly and knowledgeable will allow you to do not only good amount of damage, but also be able to knock down targets. The next skill we have is Onslaught, which is another skill that's also returning from the previous game. And the great thing about this particular skill is that it allows you to do continuous attack with your one-handed sword. This is kind of like a basic skill that comes with the player, but this skill you could actually upgrade. And when you upgrade it, it gives you the ability for you to be able to break shield blocks and knock down resistance. So another skill that you Dragon Dogma fans should be pretty familiar with. All right, so now let's take a look at the sword skills. For the sword skills, we have a brand new one called Air Word Slash. Now, this is pretty much very similar to a uppercut with a sword, okay? This is not a skill that we've seen in the previous Dragon Dogma. Basically, what it says in the description of this particular skill, it says, A flurry of a skyward slash well suited to bring flying foes to the ground. 
So it's like an uppercut with a sword, really cool. And since we are going to be fighting a lot of flying characters, it's going to be a skill we want to make sure we master. I think a combo with the skill would be really awesome. The next one we have is a returning skill for the sword called the Blink Strike. This, me, this particular is going to allow you to rush the target and land a powerful blow once you connect with them. This has the potential of being able to knock down and stagger the enemy. This ability is made to be used as a gap closer and could be upgraded so the attack would carry the player a greater distance. So it's kind of like a fast forward a plunge, which you will be able to use quite often. The next one we have is the Compass Slash. Now this is once again, another returning skill from Dragon Dogma. Basically, this is pretty much, if you think of a compass, it's round, right? So this skill pretty much give, lets you have the ability of, sp of spinning with your blade extended, depending on what weapon you have, and it will draw a deadly circle that will have a nice AOE effect. Not only that, but you will be able to employ this while you're getting attacked. So if you're getting you know, swarmed with a lot of ads, this is the skill you want to go ahead and use. Now you are able to upgrade the skill and when you upgrade it, it extends the duration of the actual skill. Now let's talk about the shield skills. Now for the shield skills, we have shield blash. This is pretty much a renamed skill from the previous game. What this allows you to do, it allows you to strike a blow with the shield that does a little bit of damage, but forces the, ta the target or the enemy to actually drop their guard. So really effective skill, you're gonna be using this quite a lot. The great thing about this is that once you guys get more skill points, you will be able to upgrade this and this will allow you to do a faster blow, having the target drop his guard and could stagger them and knock the enemy down if you actually time this correctly. Now, I personally think the fighter is gonna be a class that a lot of people are gonna pick as their pawn even though there might be some people who just like the you know standard rpg type of class and this might be their main but i want to know from you guys do you plan to main a fighter in the comment section down below now this is also a really viable option for a pawn and it's important that you understand the way this game plays you're going to want to know what each individual character is really good at so let's talk about the strengths that i feel like the pawn has and then we'll go over his weakness so you guys can get a better idea if you should pick him as your main or if you should put him as a pawn. So he is really good at really having really good defense. Okay, that's his main role within this game. He's going to be able to provide not only himself, but his teammates power. And in addition to that, he's going to be able to aggro the enemy, not only with his shield and by being able to absorb damage, but with a skill that he's able to actually taunt enemies. Now, if you put all this together, you could actually make a very strategic playstyle for the actual fighter and deal a really good amount of damage. You know, if you picked him as your main one or have him aggro while you do damage from afar. Now, these are his weaknesses. His weaknesses, unfortunately, is that he does not deal a whole powerful damage. It's very moderate. Another thing is that he is not extremely agile. He's not going to be the fastest one out of all the ones we have to pick from. And he is not going to be very effective at range. So basically with him, he's a tank. You have to get up close and personal. Make sure you hug people and slash and dash to make sure you guys kill them as quickly as you possibly can. Now, if you do decide to main a fighter, I personally think that the pawn you want to go with is either the mage or the archer to provide more damage as you're in the fray of fight. If you decide to pick him as a pawn, I think the mage and the thief would fare very, very well from his ability to aggro and him being able to do and you being able to do damage with your main character. Now, one thing to note that there is going to be a little bit of a caveat when it comes to deciding to pick him as a pawn or to pick him as your main character. If you decide to pick him as a pawn, you will be able to give him an advanced vocation. However, you won't be able to use a hybrid vocation if you decide to pick him as a pawn. Now, if you decide to pick him as your main character, you won't be able to pick an advanced vocation, but you will be able to advance into a hybrid vocation. Now remember, you will be able to pick other pawns in the world after the first one you created, but those pawns are going to be created by other people who are playing the game. So it's going to be very important that you pick your pawn correctly and that you also pick your main character as well. 
if the fighter is not the one you feel more comfortable with, then you're going to want to make sure you check out this video where I go over every single starting class to give you a better idea of what their playstyle is. And once you decide the one you have, come and watch the ultimate guide for that particular character. I hope you guys enjoyed our Dragon Dogma content. If you are doing me a huge favor, guys, drop a comment, drop a like, but most importantly, subscribe to the channel, turn those notifications so you guys won't miss when our videos go live. Thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you guys on the next video.